Keegan Murray being picked over Jaden Ivey made a lot of draft analysts raise their eyebrows. I can't say that this is particularly surprising considering Ivey is seen by a lot of people to have the potential to be the very best player from this 2022 draft class. But I think that there's a ton to like about the Keegan Murray pick. This isn't a situation where you can immediately look at it and laugh because it's just the Kings making another questionable draft pick. There's a lot more nuance to it because Keegan Murray is a very, very good prospect. His last season at Iowa from a strictly box score perspective, he looked like a monster during his sophomore season. He put up 23 and a half points, 8.7 rebounds, 1.3 steals, and 1.9 blocks per game on a really high volume 63% true shooting. Now, raw box score numbers can only tell you so much, but that's enough to draw some attention in almost any scenario, especially considering he's a 21-year-old, highly skilled, NBA-ready small forward, and he was already carrying a pretty massive portion of the load for his Iowa team. He had the third highest usage rate of any player in the Big Ten. He's got a pretty well-rounded skill set, and it's a skill set that projects to translate perfectly to the NBA stage. One of the primary reasons that I'm so high on his future success in the NBA is how sound of an off-ball player that Murray is. While he's more than capable of scoring with the ball in his hands, he doesn't rely on it. His cutting is awesome. I love what he does here where he fakes the pin down and he gets the handoff to get into the shot off of the screen. Even though he's gonna miss the shot, I love the process. I'm a lot more concerned with young players about the process than I am the actual result in a lot of cases, and Keegan Murray typically has a fantastic process. This play, he's gonna be the one coming off the pin down. My favorite part about it is that he jukes the backdoor cut, throwing the defender off, and then he's able to get into a ton of space above the break for an open shot. His shiftiness and feel without the ball in his hand isn't really something that can be taught. It's instinctual, and these are the kinds of players that are really hard to find. It's one of the reasons why I think the Chris Middleton comparison that he made recently makes a ton of sense. They're both guys that can generate their own shot with and without the ball in their hands. He's gonna be a perfect fit alongside Sabonis because Sabonis is a guy who offers a ton of playmaking out of the post, being really good at finding cutters. And Murray is obviously such a good cutter that him and Sabonis are gonna be able to develop a really interesting front court two-man game to play off of one another. We can see some of that more on-ball ability in his post game, which was one of his biggest strengths in college. He averaged 1.37 points per possession off of post-ups, and that's the best of any guy picked in the lottery. He's a tad bit on the small side for a post-up heavy guy at six foot eight, but he has no issue making use of his footwork and post fadeaway to get his shot off even against bigger defenders. He's really strong. What Keegan Murray lacks in size, he makes up for in strength. He has no issue moving guys out of his way when he's backing them down, and he's able to finish with both hands when he gets to the rim. It helps that he has good touch as well, so getting off his baby hooks and push shots is a reliable part of his offense for him to go to. This is where I see some of the major differences with the Chris Middleton comparison. Murray is gonna be a much bigger inside threat than Middleton is, really being able to blur the lines between a wing and a big man. Shot creation is an area to monitor with his game. In my opinion, it's one of his biggest swing skills for what he's gonna be able to do as a player. His post creation looks really solid like we've already seen, but is he gonna be able to score score off the dribble in isolation. There's some stuff we've seen that indicates it's certainly possible. I love what he does here, getting the ball up top, pump faking and getting the defender to bite, and then he feigns the left side drive, and then he's gonna get into a spin move, generating a ton of space just above the nail to put up a mid-range bucket. Here he has a similar MO, pump faking and dribbling into space for a mid-range pull-up. He's gonna be a guy that can feast against drop coverage. When teams sag off of him on the drive off of a closeout, he's gonna have no issue going into a mid-range shot. He's good enough of a finisher to demand interior attention. He's a great three-point shooter, so you have to honor him beyond the arc, and he's got plenty of potential with his in-between game to become a threat for mid-range pull-ups. Now, there are some concerns. He's flashed a bit of a step back, but it's not anywhere near what it needs to be for it to be something that he can lean on as an isolation scorer. In this play, the process is great, his handle looks solid, and his step back generates a ton of space. My issue with it is when he gets that space, he hesitates on the shot and it allows the defender to catch up to him and close out, making the actual shot he ends up taking a lot more difficult than if he had just gone ahead and pulled it. Here he gets it on the wing and he tries to attack the baseline. 
In these situations, we often see guys counter the baseline being shut down with a behind the back cross to their right hand to switch directions, but that's not what he does here. He waits a bit too long to switch directions and the defender is able to easily shut down the right side shot, forcing him to try and create space on the post up and he has to put up a pretty difficult one leg fadeaway. He gets the ball again on the wing and he does a good job of getting the defender to bite on the closeout. He drives right, but arguably the most open lane would have been attacking left into all this space, and he can get a better look at the rim and a better head of steam going downhill. Instead, he has a difficult angle on the right side drive, and even when getting by his defender, he doesn't quite capitalize and he ends up missing the layup. The good thing about all of this is that it's something that he can develop. His feel for the game doesn't eliminate the possibility that he can apply that to his shot creation, being a lot more aware of driving lanes and how to leverage his space creation abilities to get good looks. Keeping with the theme of swing skills, I'm really intrigued about what he can bring to the table in regards to playmaking. This split action gives us a good idea where these possibilities lie. He gets the ball off the screen and the defense is pretty dropped back into the paint. You can see that there's an open pass to his roller that could potentially result in an open look at the rim, but instead he opts for a pull-up jumper with a pretty high degree of difficulty. Here he's going to see two defenders. There's a man on the roll that he can potentially feed by going over the top of the defense for an open dunk but he doesn't capitalize on it. This play, we can see him leverage his gravity from attacking closeouts. When he gets the defender to bite on the pump fake, he's gonna force help defense to come over, and it leaves a shooter open on the perimeter, and Murray's gonna find him for a wide open three. As I've been emphasizing, and as you can see from this, he has a great feel for the game. I just wanna see that feel translate to a playmaking element. If he can add some passing skills to his arsenal, he's gonna be a really multifaceted offensive threat. Now, one of the big draws with Murray during his first year at Iowa was his defense. This was prior to him being the primary scoring option, so he was being heavily touted for his defensive abilities. He's strong, lengthy, he has good defensive positioning. One of the main issues I've noticed is him allowing inside position on post-ups. He struggles to prevent getting sealed off on post-ups, and that's much less forgivable in the NBA than it is in college. Now, this is kind of an experience thing, and it's not something that I think is an immediate concern, more of a long-term thing to watch just to see if it develops. His size and agility are gonna allow for for some level of switchability on the defensive end. I don't anticipate him being able to guard one through five, but he should have no issue being a reliable defender against forwards and some center matchups. One thing in particular that I noticed in college is that he's not always doing a ton of moving around at a high pace, rather focusing more on his defensive positioning relative to his matchup. You can look at a guy like Mark Gasol, who was similar in his defensive approach, not worrying as much about being right up on their man and being overly aggressive, rather just being in a position to disrupt anything that their matchup could be involved in. So it's really easy to look at the Ivy pick being right there for them, but there's not much you can really hate about them picking Keegan Murray instead. He's an NBA ready player, which I think holds a lot more value than modern front offices seem to realize. That's not to say that he doesn't have upside, but he'll be able to contribute from day one for Sacramento. For a team like the Kings that seem like they want to make a playoff push, it's the right move. He's gonna be able to fit seamlessly alongside Fox and Sabonis while also being able to develop his shot creation and post chops in an NBA setting. It's not really a high pressure environment and he's not a raw prospect. He's skilled while also possessing really strong potential and there's no reason he can't be exactly what the Kings need in order to be some semblance of competitive. So what do you think of the Keegan Murray pick? Is he a future all-star? Do you think he's gonna win rookie of the year? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. If you guys enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that subscribe button and leaving a like on the video. That's the number one way to support me and help me continue to make content. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.